Hello Internet, welcome to another microprocessor tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll study A255A, which is a programmable peripheral interface. It's a peripheral device attached to microprocessor to enhance its capabilities. Now, what does it actually add? Please understand A255 is a device, is a peripheral device that will give microprocessor three additional ports. As a matter of fact, microprocessor does not have ports by itself. So you can say if you wish to use port functionality in microprocessor, then A255 is the solution. And it gives three ports as I said and the three ports are 8-bit ports but they are used in a very very uh, unique way in a very very useful way uh, we can tweak them a lot and that is what we're going to discuss today now let's begin the discussion with understanding that A255A is a 40 pin IC itself and it gives us three additional ports and all of them are 8 bit ports and the port C is an 8 bit port nevertheless but it is used as a as two 4 4 bit bit ports and CU is the upper 4-bit port and CL is lower 4-bit port. So this will be the uh, first step of understanding that A255A has finally given us three ports, two of them being 8-bit and another one port C can be used as two four bit ports. Now this IC being a 40 pin IC if you study the pinout diagram of this 40 pin IC you'll find three pins by the name of A0, A1 and CS bar by the way, I'll put, a, uh, I'll put an annotation in the form of a JPEG file on top of this video that will show you the pinout diagram. You can pause the video and note it if you wish to. Now these three pins that I'm talking about, A1 and A0, are going to be used to select ports. And by virtue of having two address lines in this IC we automatically deduce that there are going to be four different locations where our microprocessor can go to and what are those four different locations because uh, our microprocessor will be connected to this IC A255 using these two address lines of course you can do a memory mapping or an IO mapping uh, depending upon your uh, choice but the there are only going to be four different locations in A255 where microprocessor can breach into where microprocessor can go into and what are those four locations if we keep A0 and A1 as 0 0 we go to port A if we make it 1 we go to port B if we make it C uh, th uh, 2 then we go to port C and if I keep it 1 1 we go to the control register of 8255 you'll find an 8-bit control register within 8255 which is of supreme importance because the port customization if you wish to uh, configure ports of 8255 whether you wish to use these ports as input ports or output ports or ports with handshaking capabilities enabled or bi-directional data bus 
so everything will be done by this control register and we are going to discuss now what does this control register uh, do and how does it help us in controlling the modes of the ports and what are the modes possible now moving to the step number three of understanding we elaborate this portion of the control word register here so this is the control register more precisely the control word register it's an 8-bit register we know now the most significant bit of control word register D7 will signify whether we wish to configure ports the port A, port B, port C in different configurations or we wish to use it as a, a BSR mode, bit set reset mode for port C. I'll talk about BSR mode in the separate video in an a, in my next video I will not touch BSR mode here for the sake of simplicity to avoid any kind of confusion so my focus here is to configure these three ports in in different possible modes which are permissible by A255 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one putting a one in D7 will allow me to configure ports it will allow me to use the rest of the bits to configure the modes of port A, port B, port C by the way there are three different modes that we can configure in A255 which are mode 0, mode 1, mode 2 we wish to configure any of these modes the first step is to make D7 as 1 because if you make it 0 it will go into BSR mode which is an altogether different mode we wish to configure the the ports so we'll make it as 1 and once we make it 1 we have 3 further options mode 0, mode 1, mode 2 and I'll tell you those options in a minute now first things first the most common configuration of any port could be uh, to be used as the input and output ports if we have these three ports the most common thing that we can do with them is to configure them as simple input and output port so that is done in mode 0 I'll write it down here also simple IO for ports A, B and C they'll be simply used as either input or output how do you configure them as input or output I'll show you in a bit but that is what mode 0 is all about and then we have mode 1 mode 1 is a little tricky because uh, we can use port A and or B for handshake, handshaking IO ports so you could say handshake IO for ports A and or B I'll tell you the meaning of and or B in a minute and port C will be used for handshake now here is what we need to clear the air very effectively that if we wish to use either A or B as handshake ports we need additional bits for handshaking this point is so very important to understand if we wish to use uh, our A or B port as handshake ports we need extra bits for handshaking where do we get those extra bits from the answer is 
if we choose to select A or B as handshake ports, port C will be used as the handshake bit. Port C will no longer be able to uh, we will we'll no longer be able to use port C as input or output ports if we choose to select mode 1. This is so very important. And port C is, is beginning to emerge as the control signaling bits also. The bits of the port C can also be used as control signals in other words. And mode 2 again is a little tricky. In mode 2, uh, A port will be used as bi-directional data bus. And port B can be used in either mode 0 or 1. And port C again is used for handshake. So again, uh, reiterating the fact that mode 1 and mode 2 will completely disable the functioning of port C as input or output ports. Um, if you wish to use port A as the data bus and that too bidirectional data bus, then uh, you must keep it as mode 2. And we have an additional uh, configuration parameter that will allow us to use port B in a either mode 0 or 1 in mode 2. Now how do we make these modes as uh, input or out I'm sorry how do we make these ports as input or output ports is pretty simple and that can be done um, by using or by configuring the other bits in the control register. Uh, up, up till now we have just understood that by keeping d7 as 1 we can only uh, we can only be able to uh, configure our 8255 in io mode and there are three different modes but how do we configure those modes how do we set those modes how do we make a port input or output is dependent upon the settings of the rest of the bits for example which is very very simple by the way d0 is for port C lower and if you make it 1 it will be input and if you make it 0 it will be output. So you need to remember this rule of thumb that to make any port input you will need to put a, a 1 in the respective uh, bits, uh, respective ports bit and to make that port output you'll need to put a zero. Uh, for example it is not tough to remember that D0 is the configuration uh, bit for port C lower but if we forget that one is for input and zero is for output then the trouble begins and similarly D1 is for port B. If you select mode zero and you wish to use B as simple input output port then your next step will be to configure B either as input or output and that can be made by making this bit as 1 or 0. 1 will make it as input, 0 will make it as output. And similarly D2 relates to this part of the settings. Let us say you, you wish to work in mode 2 and in mode 2 you have an option to uh, use B either as a simple input output port or as a handshake port. If you wish to use B as simple input output port then make it as 1 uh, sorry then make it as 0 and if you wish to use B as a handshake IO port in mode 2 then make it as 1. Because in mode 2, A will automatically be used as bidirectional data bus, that is fixed. And then port C is configured by D3, make it a, making it as 1 will make it as input, 0 as output. Port A is selected by D4, making it as 1 will make it input, 0 as output. 
very very simple d5 and d6 will be the mode selection bits 0 0 will select mode 0 0 1 will select mode 1 and 1 x will select mode 2 which is pretty simple and once you decide on to select 1 1 or 1 0 1 x means do not care it, it could be the 1 1 or 1 0 in both the cases mode 2 will be selected once mode 2 is selected then it becomes imperative to do a selection for port B you need to either select it as 0 or 1 you need to select either ports B as simple input output or handshake IO so this is what you need to take care of while configuring ports in A255 a, which is a programmable peripheral interface used to provide three additional ports to AT85 and that too in a very handy manner and I've just covered half the portion of the control register to uh, configure only ports in the next video I'll cover the BSR mode that will be used to set or reset the pins of port C and that was it for today's tutorial i hope you liked it and it was of some help if you like the tutorials in this video series then please consider subscribing to the channel you have a good day ahead and a good life bye